Hi, Martha. Hi. Nice to see you. You too. So, do you have a sense of uh, what would be useful to talk about? How, how are things going? Um, yeah, I mean, things are okay. Um, this work is just insane yeah. right now. Um, like, as you know, like, I like my work. I like, for the most part, the people I work with. Um, but yesterday, this one, this one guy, Dave, he, he's like my assistant, but he can't any fun. Um, I give him tasks and he always seems to just like say he's trying to do it and ends up being blamed on me or other people just don't know that like that task was assigned to him. Um, and so then it looks like I'm not doing my, my work. Um, so that just like makes me so aware of what it's like to work with good people, but obviously I can't say anything like to my boss. Um, cause I don't know. I just can't put that, that kind of authority. Yeah, you, um, you were saying about Dave, I remember you saying last week about Dave and saying you were getting really yeah. frustrated with him. Yeah. He like, I don't even know if he's aware that he's not doing things. Um, but I don't know. He's nice. People respect him, but I don't know if, if like you're my assistant, it seems like get things done. Um, what, what what happened? Did something happen then yesterday that really? Got... Yeah, I, yeah. So we have this big project, um, and like each person has their own tasks, and because he's my assistant, like I gave him a bunch of tasks to do, um, and I was relying on him, and I mean, so were other people, and he just left work early, uh, like he was like, oh no, I have plans. And he tried saying that he told us about it, um, which like, I don't think he did. Um, and so it just left all of us with way more to do. And other people, I don't know, they were like, yeah, no, that's totally fine. We'll get it done. But to me, that's just not, you can't just do that. It left all of a sudden all of his tasks, I either now had to do or give to other people. Um, and like things were due today. So, I don't know. He's uh, just like a pain to work with. Uh, how, it's not the first time either. Yeah, you were saying. What were you, so what were you the feeling yesterday? What was the kind of emotion? What was the feeling for you? I don't know. He was just like pissing me <laughs> off, but but also other people were totally fine with it. Um, so you, you were feeling so pissed well. off? Yeah, maybe. He's just like, I don't know, he's new to the company. Um, so I don't know if that like is something that he'll end up, I don't know. It sounds like, it sounds like for you, Martha, there was a feeling of kind of like being pissed off with him, you're frustrated with him, you're angry with him, but also you're kind of noticing that you're feeling those things and that other people aren't feeling that. And I wonder what, that, what, what that's like, what that brings up for you. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if other people aren't feeling it or or if they just don't don't show it in the same way. I don't know. Like obviously I can't get pissed off with him at work. Um so it's mainly just like when he does things like that. I don't know, because he's done he's done things like that before where he just drops his all of his tasks. Um ah. It's annoying. <laughs> it's annoying. I don't know. <laughs> I can hear that kind of annoyed, pissed off. You're kind of smiling, but actually, you were really annoyed. Yeah. Tell me about that. Tell me about that kind of being annoyed. Um. How's it feel for you? I don't know. It's just like it like makes me want to yell at him or something, which obviously isn't appropriate at the workplace. <laughs> um. But I you don't want to yell. No, like I want. I mean, obviously, I can't. You're yell. not gonna yell. No. But if you were gonna yell, what would you say to him? Um, like grow up. <laughs> like you have responsibilities. You're like grow up, you have responsibilities. Yeah. I mean, I I just don't feel like he's aware of, 
like his actions, whatever he drops, all of a sudden now is put on us. Yeah, and that, that feels what unfair. Yeah. It feels unfair. He's just kind of going off and you're left, I mean, to pick everything up. Yeah. I'm just noticing, actually, as you're talking about that, I guess, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you were saying, you you know, things are feeling difficult with your partner and that that's difficult. And uh, I guess there's some of those, it sounds like there's there's a few resonances there between what you're feeling with Dave and also what you're feeling with your boyfriend about, you know, you were saying about kind of grow up, take some responsibility. Yeah, I guess. How's, how's things been going there? Um, I mean... Things are normally good. Um, like, obviously, we get along. He's funny. Um, we just hit one year. Um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I would say things are good. We hang out with friends a lot. Um, he's nice. Um... But you, but you did say that, you know, when we were talking a few weeks ago, that this, this there's also difficulties and, in a sense, yeah. stuff you want to sort out. Yeah, like, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, as I said, that he, like, disappears sometimes just for a few days and, like, doesn't text or anything. Um, I mean, like, he's reassuring about it or whatever, but, like, that also feels childish um in what sense like you can't you can't just disappear or like not message ghost me or whatever um i don't know if he's like in contact with other people when he does that but whenever i tell him he's just like oh no i was okay um kind of like laughs it off um what, what did you say you're not sure if he's in contact with other people well, like, you know, when he, like, doesn't message me back, I don't think other people are like, oh, my God, he's not messaging me either. It feels like it's only me that he's not texting. Um, like, he's close with his family, so I'm sure they're in, they're in touch. But I don't know. That just feels like, yeah, like, he's ghosting me. But it's just, like, so much of his flakiness or, like, his lack of awareness. Um, I don't know. I feel like all guys are just like so many years behind <laughs> in maturity and it's, but like he also, I mean, what's there to complain about? Like he's, he treats me well. He's generous. He's funny. I don't know. Yeah. But you were going to say it's, it's, how, how does it feel? Because, you know, I guess on the one hand you're saying it's fine. It's okay. It's going well, but, that, that you, there's some serious concerns there that you have. Yeah, I mean, like the concerns, I don't know if that's just like on me. Um, he's like, he's great. And then some small things will happen, you know, like disappearing or um, I think, I don't know if we, no, I don't think we talked about this last time, but like, we had a wedding, a friend of mine was getting married. Um, I'm like, obviously he was gonna be my plus one. Um, and then just a couple of days before he was like, sorry, can't come. Um, and said that like there was an emergency with his mom, which I don't know, maybe they're close, but not a big enough emergency. Like I saw him a few days after the wedding um, and he didn't mention it. So that was just like, flakiness at the highest level um I don't know it's like that just feels childish also um but Sorry, then of course he was apologetic um just like childish to to do that kind of like flakiness or dropping things at the last minute or like not being aware that your actions have consequences. Um, I mean, but I guess like he apologized and stuff. So like, that's not childish, but. But it's kind of left you with a sense. I mean, it sounds like the apology felt okay, but it's also left you with a sense of 
I don't know what is it an uncertainty or a feeling of that you can't trust him um I mean like yeah his apology like he apologized that's step one <laughs> um I don't know but like how many times can you apologize I don't know like he I it just didn't make me feel like this was going to be the last apology um Oh, like, there's gonna be a lot more yeah or like oh apologizing then just like gets rid of whatever just happened um or it's like i'm not gonna forget that he just dropped out you know um but to him maybe maybe it's like oh well if i do something and then i apologize for it like mistake erased um which like that's dumb that's childish because hmm. because actually for you it sounds like it isn't erased that there's something that's still there. Tell me, tell me what, so what happened? So you were going to go to this, cause it sounds like that had quite an impact on you. So you were, you planned to go to this friend's wedding. Yeah. So yeah. take me through it. Yeah, no, she's a really close friend. Um, we've known each other since we were little. Um, like Josh has met her a bunch. Um, and so she was getting married. Um, and obviously Josh knew for a while that he was going to be my plus one, which was obvious. Um, plus like they got to know each other. Um, and then we like, we knew what, that we were going to have to travel and like pay for a hotel and stuff like that. Um, and he wasn't in the party, but I was, um, and just like a couple of days before he he called me but i think i like like i couldn't talk i think i was at work um and so then just over text he was like he was apologetic but he was like hey sorry can't come to the wedding i'm like that was it <laughs> and so obviously i was like you know, we need to talk about this. Um, but he just said that there was an emergency with his mom and then ghosted me for a few days. So that's like, well, like the ghosting is normal for him. Um, but obviously not just like dropping the wedding. Um, and so I had to go, I mean, like, fine, I can go alone. I've, I've done that. <laughs> I know how to be independent. Um, but it just, it sucked. Like I, I was relying on him. Um, and so then I had to go to the, the wedding alone. Um, obviously like my friend Carla was, I don't know. She was, it was her wedding day, but it was like, you know, where's Josh? Um, and I was like, I actually didn't have an answer. I was like, Oh, emergency with his mom. Um, and then it was just like a simple apology when I got back. So. So how did you feel? I mean, just taking one back a bit. So, so you get this text from him saying, just sorry, I can't. Call. How did you feel? Um, I mean, like he tried to call and I was at work. Um, and like, you know, so we spoke for a few minutes. Um, no, but like when he texted, I was, I don't know. Like on one hand, it felt familiar. Um, it also totally sucked. Um, I don't know. It kind of just made me feel like alone or like alone, but also, okay, well, like this independence is normal or familiar. So there was a sense of familiarity. Yeah. Can you say, say a bit more about that? When, when you say familiar, what do you mean? Um, like, I don't know, we've only been together a year. So like, you know, I've been single in the past. Um, just like this feeling of I'm on my own, like both in a good way of like, you know, I'm independent, I can do my own things. Um, and like can take care of myself, things like that. But it also just felt, I don't know, like he wasn't, he wasn't aware of how it would make me feel. 
like one all of a sudden to drop a wedding that we had been looking forward to and then also like to do that over text so it, it felt like he wasn't he, he wouldn't have been aware and what was that for you did you feel angry with him or upset or disappointed um, I mean like I was I think I felt angry that he did it without an explanation or like one that felt valid um no but I think I was more just like hurt mm. there's something about kind of going back into a place of just being on your own and having to do things by yourself which as you say there's some freedom there and there's some excitement but there's also something about it for you that feel feels familiar and a bit maybe hurtful to be back there again. Yeah. Um I mean like the the like independence part I'm fine with. I think like the hurtful part was like the fact that it didn't seem like he really understood how much this meant to me um and that you know like photos at the wedding and like the experience of going to a wedding that kind of thing like all of a sudden not only will he not be there but it's like look at martha she's single even though i'm not but just like i don't know so there was a sense that maybe people would be looking at you in, in the photos and things and saying, oh, there's Martha, she's single. Yeah, like all of a sudden now, like, you know, people know we're dating. So to have to ask, like answer questions people are asking or. I don't know, it was like one added thing. Um, mm. And like something that we were looking forward to to experience together. Um, I keep on picking up what I keep on picking up is a kind of feeling of disappointment of like the, there was something from Josh you were wanting in the relationship, a, a kind of someone who is there with you, someone that you could be seen as part of a couple and that he's kind of dropped that and not really with a clear explanation or understanding of how that, how that might feel for you. Yeah. Yeah, no, that sounds right. Um, I don't know. It just feels like, like maybe this disappointment is always there. Um, like, especially just with him ghosting and stuff. Um, and then this just felt like 10 times more, um, like for a multi-day trip, like for a wedding. Um, I don't know, but it, it also feels like, like, who am I to be disappointed? Like, he's also really nice. He apologized. Um, I don't know. But yeah, it sucked. Um, mm. It's hard to, it sounds like with that disappointment, part of you maybe feels it or that feeling of being hurt. And part of you feels that you shouldn't be feeling that. You should just be enjoying the relationship and appreciating it. And uh, who, who are you to kind of have those feelings? Yeah. But you do have them, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, it just feels like, I don't know, like, as I've said, like, having a younger brother and, like, I don't know. Like, I'm the one that's always taking care of other people. Um, and, like, then, then on some level, I felt like I had to then take care of Josh being, like, Oh no, it's okay that you can't come. Like, oh, don't feel sorry. Like, I accept your apology, but like, oh, really, it's okay. Mm. Um, do you, uh, something comes up to me. I mean, do you feel that he looks after you? Um, I think. I mean, I think so. Like he, he's generous. Um. I mean, like I've said before, like he only really says I love you like after I say it. Um... But I think what comes up for me and, you know, this might be completely wrong um, and just tell me if it is, but I, it does feel like at some level there's a sense of maybe when he's ghosting you or when he's kind of dropping out of stuff, but 
<clears throat> it feels like he's not, I mean, looking after is not the right word, but something about how he's not there for you. He's not reliable. He's not dependable. You know, you talked a bit last time about your brother and that role that you had in the family and kind of wanting, you were saying, one of the things you said last week was about always wanting a bigger brother who, you know, somebody who, who, who you wouldn't have to do all the looking after. And I just wonder if that connects at all to what's going on with Josh in terms of wanting him to be that person, maybe feeling a bit disappointed that he's not. Um... Yeah. I mean, I think like, like part of me just wants to be in a relationship where, I don't know, like we can look after each other or um, like someone who's aware of my feelings or impact or, you know, like comes home after a long day and if I'm feeling down, like is able, yeah, I don't know if take, take care of the right word, but like just like tune into that. Mm. Um, Someone who's maybe tuned into you and knows what your feelings are and it sounds like you say with Josh, and for instance, with the wedding, there was a real sense of him not understanding what the impact of what 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 he did was. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, we've also been together a year, so I don't want to just like discount like all that he does do for me and like, you know, the good times that we have together, but. I don't know. We've also been together a year. Like, I'm ready. <laughs> um, You're ready for? Um, like, to feel in a committed, like, long-term relationship. I mean, that doesn't need to be marriage, but, like, especially going to the wedding. Um, like, I want kids. Um just like being in a relationship where like it feels like it's full of like full of love and full of taking care of each other and checking in and like also independence but like maybe it's okay to be a little dependent on each other in terms of checking in um do you feel that you can be dependent on josh um Like, I feel like I am at times, but then I always have to be aware that, like, he might flake out. I, I imagine that makes it quite hard to let yourself go and really allow yourself to be dependent on him. Yeah. That's yeah, what... it's like, it just always has to be, like, an awareness, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess what comes through to me is just that sense of you feeling like you have to kind of hold yourself back a bit and not <clears throat> totally allow yourself to trust him because although there's some really positive things that you really love about him, you really like about him at some level because of the flakiness, because sudden things, it's like you just can't let yourself sink down into the relationship and really trust it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, but like then when things are good, things feel really good. Um, but I guess just like more and more that awareness of like, well, things might, might drop out again. Um, but then also knowing that like his flakiness or ghosting or whatever only ever lasts a few days. So like, it'll be back, but yeah, and no, it feels like a roller coaster and it's exhausting. Sorry. It feels like a really, like a roller coaster, like it's a exhausting. roller coaster and it's exhausting. Yeah. Say more about that exhausting in what way? Um, just like riding that wave of, of like things are really good and then like being taken out of it and then going into doubt and going into like, oh my God, are all men like this? Like, I think I just spiral about like, will I ever find someone or like, if he is the one, then how do I deal with this? Um, 
and then that'll just be for a few days and then it's like back to being great and you know we get along so well and just like riding that and always keeping it in the back of my head of like how much I love him I don't know it's mm. I can really hear that roller coaster. I can really hear those kind of highs of feeling like you love him, of feeling things are great and everything's okay. But then it kind of dips down and you get these <clears throat> times when it feels like you, you feel let down and feel not understood and feel um, like he, he's not really there for you. And then it gets okay again. So it kind of leaves you not really certain what to do, whether this is a relationship you can trust. Is it one that you can kind of really commit to? Yeah, but I also feel like, I don't know, like, I love him so much that, like, to think about not being with him is just, I don't know, like, can I just put up with, I don't know. Can you just put up with? With, like, him flaking out or whatever, because um, then things go back to being really good. Um. But also, I don't know, like, I don't want that to be my whole life. Yeah, the thought of a whole life of being with someone who's constantly flaking out or you, you can't trust that they're not going to flake out at some point. Yeah, or like if we have kids together and then he does that, like, I don't want, I don't want our kids all of a sudden thinking that's normal or like, that would be a lot on me to have to take care of kids like while he's gone or whatever so what's your sense of what's your sense of what's going on it sounds like the key you know there's this key like there's a really good relationship but then there's these periods where things really don't work for you because josh is, is what you describe as kind of flaking out or ghosting you or disappearing so i guess there's a question of whether that can change um or whether it's something you need to accept. If you need to accept it, it sounds like, you know, you're really not sure if this is the right relationship, but you know, maybe it's something that can change. What what happened? I mean, how how do you, when he does go to that, when these things go, you know, wrong, how do you kind of respond to that? How, how do you engage with that? Um, I mean, like usually I call Carla, but she's married now. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't know like I mean the first few times I was definitely more shocked and now it's now it feels like taking care of a little kid like I'm just gonna wait um and it's like something that's annoying and definitely definitely like upsetting but I don't know I like I know he'll be back um or hope he will um how, how do you respond to him? Do you talk to him about it? Do you? Yeah. Um, I mean, I send a lot of texts. Um, I try calling. But like, I don't know, when he comes back and apologizes, it's, it's always something like, you know, oh, he wasn't around his phone or his phone died or um, like could be true. I don't know if it is. Um, you can charge a phone. Um, I don't know. He apologizes, and then it's good to be with him. I mean, I think I tell him, like, don't do that. Okay, so you say don't do that, but do you, do you tell him how you feel, like what goes on for you and what it's like for you? Um, not really. Because I can hear for you, like what you described with the wedding, that you feel hurt and maybe disappointed. You feel kind of like maybe, you know, let down in some ways, perhaps. So that's all going on for you. But it sounds like you don't share that. What you say is, you know, you got to do this and you, you got to be in touch, like you said last week. But um, you, you, what happens that you don't tell him how you feel? I don't know like we don't really talk about feelings that much I don't know I feel like women are better about that 
like Carla and I will just like talk about feelings for hours. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I mean, I could with Josh, but I don't know. Like sometimes he's just like, not that he brushes it off, but it's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, like, he'll say I love you when I say I love you first like he has to follow my lead on everything and then it's it's I don't know like if I start bringing up emotions either he's gonna I don't know like maybe he would just laugh it off or turn it into a joke like not in a bad way he's funny um I don't know it just does it's not the norm it's not the norm. I wonder, you know, to if you thought about saying to him, look, Josh, you know, I felt really hurt. Um, you know, I, I really wanted you to be there, like stuff that you said to me or imagine stuff you said to Carla about what, how it really impacts you. When you think about, like, imagine saying that to Josh, um, what does it bring up for you? Like, all of a sudden, I'm dependent. Um, yeah, I think it would feel weird to be, like, not, yeah, like, to all of a sudden say what I, not, like, what I need, but, I don't know, like, growing up, I people were always the one coming to me with that kind of stuff or um, like I was taking care of my brother and I don't know, like saying that, saying that to Josh, either, either would feel like I'm being like the teacher being like, it's time to talk about feelings. Um, and like, because he is childish in some ways, um, or all of a sudden me coming to him being like this needy, needy little girlfriend. It's kind of needy little girlfriend and the thought of you as a needy little girlfriend is what really uncomfortable or unfamiliar? Uh, like cringy. Cringy. <laughs> yeah cringy to, to for you to have feelings and needs um yeah i mean that's normal but i guess to like be needy <laughs> like i don't know it feels like there's a difference between having needs and then yeah. being needy. so you don't want to be needy yeah but you do have needs yeah it sounds like you know some of the needs you talked about with josh is about feeling like he's kind of there for you feeling like he, he's not going to just disappear those yeah. are some of your needs but it sounds like it's quite difficult to imagine kind of sharing that because perhaps it touches on your own feelings of vulnerability yeah yeah, I don't know. It feels like things I'm fine talking about, like, with Carla, like, with other people who talk about that kind of stuff. Um, but that's just, like, not his personality. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe he does with the other guys. I don't know. But I'm just aware that you're kind of, I guess, describing it or explaining it in terms of Josh and what Josh is like and Josh is a bit, bit childish and, you know, I guess Josh isn't in the room. So, you know, can't. it's difficult to discuss that. But I guess for you, what you're kind of recognising, you know, if we just keep it focused on you, is that for you maybe sharing that and being open about that vulnerability is difficult. You're kind of used to being in that role of looking after other people, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, it feels weird to then like reverse that. 
I wonder if there's part of you that in some ways in relationships, because you talked about a few past relationships before and you were saying that there was kind of, you know, a bit similar patterns. I wonder if, you know, part of you does tend to go into relationships and maybe not create that situation, but just because it feels so familiar, there's something about getting back into that role of being the one who's maybe kind of looking after the other person and being the dependent one. And maybe it's less familiar or more difficult to go into that role of being the one who also has needs and yeah i mean like i like being the one who takes care of people and like i don't know that brings me warmth and yeah maybe it just feels familiar or something i know that i'm good at um and then to all of a sudden need that from someone else feels like well why can't I do it for myself or um that you should be able to do that for yourself yeah yeah like if I can do it for other people I don't know but then why can't I have it from someone else I don't know yeah why why can't someone else do that for you I don't know, like, maybe I'm, like, scared is the wrong word, but, like, if I all of a sudden experience that, then how sad would it be to realize that I went, like, 26 years without that? So that really touched on some painful feelings, some sad feelings. Yeah. to think about that you've actually what not had that that you've always looked after others but actually for a lot of your life maybe all your life that you haven't felt looked after yourself yeah I mean like in different ways I have but but yeah I don't feel like I really have in like the way that I look after other people um you haven't been looked after in the way that you look after other people. Yeah. Because you had to do so much of the looking after, I guess, when you were younger. Because with your brother. Yeah, and just like in all, like past relationships and things like that. Like even friendships a little bit too. Like I feel like I'm the one that's like hyper aware of other people and their needs and like their feelings and things that are important to them. Um, yeah, and like I haven't really had that. And so not that it's like better than to go my whole life without feeling it, but I don't know, like if I feel it now, like I don't want to feel like then I was missing out my whole life. I can hear there's some real sadness as you say that. Just thought of missing out your whole life. How, you, how, how are you feeling as you say that? Mm. I guess sad. Uh, um... I don't know, but then I think, like, my default is to think of, like, well, people do nice things. Um, like, maybe, like, negating that feeling. Um, people do nice things, just does nice things for yeah, you. Yeah. That's, that sounds really true, but it also sounds like that there is that sadness as well, under, maybe underneath it or alongside it. Yeah. And then, like, You've always been looking after other people. Yeah. And to ask for it now, to express that need for other people now, would be to kind of recognise that maybe you haven't had it as much as you'd like to. Yeah, like if I do it now, then like, why didn't I 10 years ago? Like, I don't know. I've gotten this far. <laughs>
Yeah, and you've done amazing. I mean, you know, the things you described in your life, relationships, you've done amazingly well, but it does also feel like maybe something has been missing. And I guess there's a question, maybe a choice about whether do you kind of recognize that and try and do something to maybe bring that more into your life? Or do you say, well, you know, I've been okay up to now and um, I'm, I'm just going to let it go. Yeah. Because I get a sense with Josh when you, you know, that there's lots of great things there and that you really love him and that you have a lot, but there is something, you know, there is something more that you want, need from him. Yeah. Yeah, like all of a sudden I'm realizing, like, if we are gonna be like life partners or like make that commitment, then yeah, there are things that I would want from him more so than if we were just like casually dating. Mm. And what are those things? Um, like, yeah, I guess that I can depend on him, like, some level of consistency, um, some initiation from him, um, yeah, I guess, like, dependability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, so you, there are some needs there, aren't there? Yeah. And I imagine it feels, I imagine it doesn't feel easy to kind of say these are things that I need from him. Yeah, no. Then I, yeah, I feel like that I just be, in my head, I become like a needy girlfriend that he'll want to, I don't know, like, that's not convenient. <laughs> that, that what, that, that's not, that he'll want to, what, that he'll want to get rid of? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, like, if he realizes all of a sudden that, like, he has to step up to the plate more, um, or, like, yeah, that I want to be able to depend on him, that, like, more is being asked of him, that'll be the tipping point. So you're worried that if you express those needs, he'll go? Yeah. Yeah. Which, like, of course, I don't want to break up with him, but. Yeah. Yeah. Or that he'll, like, lash out, like, you know, make it a joke or not take it seriously. Um, and then I'll, like, I don't want to always be the one that's like, you are really funny, but we have to have a serious conversation. Like, I want to be fun. Yeah. So I guess that's another need. You want to be the fun one, but yeah. as you say, you don't want to always be the one looking after him. Yeah. But it feels difficult. It's like you've got needs, but it feels difficult and it's almost like you don't feel you have a right to express them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's like that I don't have the right, but yeah, maybe it's that or maybe that's not quite right. Like weighing things are so good so why why like mess with that there's a fear of messing with it if you express your needs and i guess it feels really unfamiliar doesn't that to, yeah to be able to express your needs but like you're saying like with david at work as well it's in those situations you feel kind of powerless don't you that you just have to go along with that yeah yeah i mean the nice thing about like at work is I have a boss <laughs> whereas you don't have like a boss Josh, in your there is no boss <laughs> there's no boss so there's no boss so in a sense there's you that it comes down to you doesn't it yeah because I guess I just wonder you know you want you know the idea would be just is different in some ways I know not in in lots of ways you'd love him as he is but there are ways that you'd like him to be different and maybe he's not going to change without you kind of well not that you can make him change but maybe you can talk to him about how you feel what it does to you uh, how upset you get um so that he understands that more i guess you know nobody none of us are mind readers and you know josh may not know that without some conversation 
Yeah. I mean, I feel like he knows it in some way, like intuitively, like, you know, me getting upset or whatever when he goes to like when he couldn't come to the wedding. Um but yeah, like I haven't told him directly, like this is what I need from you, but I don't know. Like I can tell when he's upset and like when he needs space and when he needs comfort or mm. things like that. Like I'd love for him to be able to sense it. <laughs> Yeah, you want him to be able to pick it up and just be able to know what you're feeling. Yeah. But, mm, well, maybe maybe he does. It sounds like maybe he doesn't. Yeah. You kind of hope he does. And you think intuitively he has some sense. But maybe, you know, I guess there's a possibility that he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't know how much it upsets you. Maybe there's a way. Maybe what we need to be thinking about is ways that you can maybe communicate that to him in a way that doesn't feel needy but does also allow you to have kind of needs and to feel that it's okay to express those needs i'm just martha i'm just aware of the time you just got a couple of minutes before we need to finish okay how's it felt talking today um i don't know um like I think it's all stuff that, like, I know deep down. Um, and so, like, part of it is hard to then talk about um, or realize or whatever. Um, What's the stuff you know deep down? Like, that I want more. Um, that him not coming to the wedding, like, actually really sucked. Um, even though, you know, like I accepted his apology so quickly. Um, yeah, like that it affects me. Um, it's hard to acknowledge those things and kind of have it out. Yeah. There. Yeah, and I feel like, I don't know, like there is no time <laughs> in a day. Like I work, I'm tired. Then I then we're hanging out and things are good. Like there's no real time to check in besides with you. Um, yeah, no, I mean it feels. I don't know. Now I have a lot to think about. <laughs> it's kind of brought stuff to the surface, I guess, hasn't it? Like yeah. you say, kind of like stuff you know deep inside about maybe your needs and what's not working for you as well as what is. Yeah, and I guess things are so busy, it's kind of easy to kind of bury that. But I guess the reason you came here to counseling is because you did want to think it through and yeah. kind of process it. But I appreciate that that's not always easy. Yeah. Like, I wish I could do this, like with Josh, you know, like, let's set up one hour. Let's talk. <laughs> um, yeah. You'd yeah. like that time to talk about this stuff with Josh and yeah yeah it sounds like you've maybe done some of that but i guess what you're saying is that some of that hasn't maybe been directly expressed to him yeah i mean like a little bit but i feel like it's like while we're cooking dinner or like i don't know we're always doing or like in the car like it's not just like actually sitting down without distraction um yeah. yeah or it's so fast yeah. you know and then he's funny <laughs> and yeah. then we joke and i don't know and it sounds like these kind of things with josh about his use of humor that maybe makes it more difficult to have that serious conversations but i think what we've been talking about in this session is also there's maybe things in you that make it difficult as well at times to be open about what's going on for you and how things affect you that you kind of naturally go into that kind of role of looking after someone else maybe rather than allowing somebody to look after you or feeling that it's okay for you to be looked after and expressing those feelings yeah like it feels weird to all of a sudden bring up my needs like when he is tired from a long day or like when he's stressed when I don't know it's much easier for me to be like, 
I'll cook dinner or like you relax or let's talk things through or like, oh, I bought you something. Um, that's just, yeah, it feels like less effort on my part. Yeah, but there's also, I guess, something about the kind of psychological effort about yeah doing something. You know, the situation and things. There's things about Josh, but there's also things about you. And I guess what you were saying earlier in the session is that in some ways you got a I don't know, like a choice, or do you kind of try and find ways of being in a relationship in which you also have needs and those are expressed, or is it yeah. just too difficult to go that way? And do you you know, is it better to just stay in that kind of role of looking after? Like, I don't know what what you think. Do you... Um, I feel like it'll like I could totally be the caretaker or whatever for like I don't know twenty more years, but then all of a sudden it'll hit me that like wow I'm 50 and I'm taking care of everyone I don't know like like the candle will burn out and at some point it'll be too late to now find someone <laughs> who can take care of me mm. yeah yeah so I should probably do that now sorry so I should probably do that now <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'm aware, you know, when you we were talking about that and that choice, I was saying you could definitely do that role, couldn't you, doing being that caretaker? And I can see why it would be sad to kind of acknowledge that there might be differences. But I guess if I'm, if I'm honest, you know, there's part of me was thinking, but yeah, it would be sad, but also do you want to, is it better, would it be better to do that now than get to your 50s or your 60s and then, you know, think, because it's, yeah, he's still so young and there's still so much possibility. Yeah. But also, like, I don't know, friends are getting married. Like, it doesn't feel like there's that much time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does that, that feels a pressure. Yeah. Yeah, like, especially, like, wanting kids and, um, like, wanting to really like start a family like yes yeah. <clears throat> so there's a kind of balance there isn't there between kind of wanting to get on with it and the finding the right person and finding yeah. who you can be in 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 that yeah okay yeah okay if we finish there yeah yeah okay well, i'll see you next week then okay thank you <laughs>